Hi, my name is Zachary Carr, and welcome to People in Perspective. Joining us today is Susan Carr, and she is a, and she is a photographer. Susan? Hi, Zach. Um, so, not only being a photographer, you're also an author about photography. How I about am. you explain a little bit about uh, the book you have out now? I, um, this book came out in February of this year. It's called The Art and Business of Photography, and it's based on the fact that I, I love photography and I want it to stay a viable way for people to make a living, and it's a little difficult to do that now. So I, this book is about combining your passion for photography as an artist with needing to run your business, photography business, like a business, so that you can make enough money to continue to do your art. Now, why would it be difficult today to be a photographer? It, there is not as much photography work out there as there used to be, and there's actually more people that want to be photographers. So right now, the buyers of photography um, are in the best position. They can, they can negotiate, or they have more power in the negotiations over what they pay for that work, and a lot more photography because of what's available on the internet for very little money. Um, is able to be used by people that need need photography. So really commissioned assignments that the beefy kind of assignments I've been in business for 27 years and there aren't as many that I do on a yearly basis as I used to. So you really need to know how to run a business and make it profitable in order to maintain that business. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, the big beefy assignments, I guess. Um, <laughs> right, exactly. So you actually brought us uh, some prints. I Would did. You, in fact, the, one of them was the uh, cover of your the book. The actual cover of the book. Uh, would you mind explaining us what that is? Um, this is a, a picture of a slinky and a toaster. <laughs> I can see that. I did it in studio, and I did it as part of a uh, fundraiser, actually, for uh, an American Society of Media Photographers. This is a trade association that I actually do some work for now, and they have individual chapters. And at that time, I lived in Michigan, and we had a fundraiser for our chapter, and we were supposed to take it was the 50th anniversary of the, of the Slinky that year, and we were, as artists, supposed to take the Slinky and interpret it in some way. And I photographed it with this um, toaster that was uh, made about the same year, came out around the same time as the Slinky as a product, and it has the same rounded shape, and I thought they looked good together and, and photographed them together. And then in the end, years later, uh, my publisher liked it uh, so much that it became the cover of my book. So. Cool. Uh, you've got a few other stills. Mm -hmm. uh, how about you show us that? Yeah, a lot of the beginning of my career, probably the first 15 years, I would say the dominant work that I did was studio-related uh, work. This is a, a photograph that I took that was done for a graphic designer who um, she, I photographed for her these printed pieces that she's the designer of and she wants to show them on her website and in her portfolio to prospective clients. But we need to come up with an interesting way to photograph something that is really just a printed brochure. So it's not so easy to, to make them look interesting, but that's what this was, huh. this was done with. And this is a, a more recent image. My older work that I, uh, some of that I'm showing was done with cameras and film, the newer work was done with digital cameras. So I have both. Um, okay. And those the flowers? Are, yeah, the flowers. <laughs> the flowers was completely a self promotional piece. Did not have a client behind it. Um, I just needed new work in my portfolio at the time, and I love these beautiful sunflowers in the summer, and I photographed it. I don't know if you can see it, but in, in the close-up, but there's actual movement in the picture, which means I photographed it with a 4x5 camera, but I actually moved the lens during the exposure, which gave part of the picture stayed crisp in focus and other edges of the picture had a nice blurred effect to it. So it was just a fun, a fun thing to do huh. that got people's attention. This uh, photograph was a, a wonderful project, one of those beefy projects that I miss so much, but this was done for a um, printing company and I did a whole series of about 12 photographs using juxtaposing interesting objects and shapes and colors together for them to show off um, their printing capability. Huh. Yeah, 
Well, how about you show it? Tell us what this is. This is a house on Lake Michigan near Muskegon, Michigan. And I photographed it with my uh, business partner for the um, architect that designed the house. So it's, uh, and this image actually is the same house. Photographed this cupola is this room way up here at the top of this house. Wow. So you go up stairs up to this place and uh, you have a gorgeous view of Lake Michigan um, while you're up there and it's pretty cool. Um, cool. So um, uh, what made you want to become a photographer in the first place? I first took a photography class when I was a sophomore in high school and I had been around photography my whole life. My father always has a camera in his hand and was always documenting family events and I joined in and helped and did those things too when I was younger. Then when I became a sophomore in high school, took an actual photography class, learned how to develop film and make my own prints in black and white, and just fell in love with it. I have absolutely loved photography above anything else um, that I could do with my life ever since that, that time. So never, I, I'm one of the oddballs out there that's never wavered in what I wanted to do. It's always been, about photography. Even though now I teach and, and do some writing, um, it's still about photography. Everything relates back to photography for me. Awesome. Um, what was your education? Like what school? or? I went to Western Michigan University, which is in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, and I have got a, a bachelor's degree in arts with my emphasis in photography. So I took a lot of art classes. I had a minor in sociology, a minor in art history. And um, I kind of geared my education at the university because the university offers so much to be as much well-rounded and more of a liberal arts style of education and then as the minimum number of art classes that I actually took. I'm not very good at drawing. Um, I shouldn't say that because I do believe that you can learn these things if you really want to, but my heart was always in the photography. So most of the art classes I took were either art history or photography. Huh. Well, you kind of uh, touched this on the subject of your book, but um, like, I mean, modern cameras, I mean, like those prints are awesome, but <laughs> modern cameras, they can take really good pictures. They can. How, how has that affected your business? Uh, you mean digital photography, yeah, how it's affected yes. my business? It's been difficult, actually, because cameras are so smart and sophisticated now that they can do a lot of the work that I used to have to do on my own. I mean, we used to go into some of these architectural spaces, and we had to actually put filters on the lights to make so that the film would read the lights accurate to what our eyes sees. Now, the digital camera can handle all that mixed lighting situation and do that work for people. So, where pho professional photographers used to be very special, no one could take a picture of an interior that looked like the ones I took. Um, that's not so true anymore. From a technical standpoint, a lot of people can take pictures that match the quality of mine. What I have to emphasize is my personal vision, the art part of what I do, more than the technical. You used to be able to make a living with the, just the technical. Now you have to emphasize the art part more than you used to. Huh. So for anyone out there, I guess, watching this who wants to be a photographer, do you have any advice for them? You have to be passionate about it. If you don't absolutely want to do photography every day when you get up, uh, then go make a living doing something else and do photography as a hobby. It's not an easy way to make a living. It sounds harsh when I say it so it like that, but it's true. And I think if you love, love, love photography or anything that you choose to do, I mean, it, having a drive and passion behind it if it's arts related is very important. It's very, very important because, again, that vision and what you bring to the table that's unique is the most important thing. You need to know all the business stuff, too, which is what my book's about. But my book's about both, actually, needing to have that passion, but also needing to be a business person. Hmm. So I guess some of the best advice you can give is to buy your book. <laughs> I would love for everyone to buy my book. That would be great. And it's like only $16 on Amazon or something. It's like, you know. Not that expensive. Thanks again for coming on the show, Susan. Thank you. And uh, I'm Zachary Carr, and this has been People in Perspective, and thanks for watching. <laughs>